Tesla's down in the pre-market. Electric reporting the EV maker plans to lay off more than 10 percent of its workforce in wake of falling sales. The tech publication cited a company-wide memo from Elon Musk in which he's quoted as saying the cuts are necessary to prepare Tesla for the next phase of growth. Reuters uh, later matched that headline. Uh, one of the lines from the email re regarding layoffs from Musk says there's nothing I hate more uh, but needs to be done. I didn't like it when Tesla laid off more than 10% of its employees earlier this month. So I figured that now would be a good day to teach you about the American economy through the lens of this layoff. It is clear from the company's financials that this company, Tesla, has been making money since 2020. In 2021, they earned $5.5 billion. The next year, they made $10 billion. And the year after that, they made 15 billion. And furthermore, this year they have already earned 13.6 billion, considering we're not yet even halfway into the year. By the way, this is profit, and this means that they have paid off all the employees' wages and they have settled all of their taxes. Does anybody believe that a company like this should be laying off its employees? I don't think so. I feel like today is a good time to teach people about the USA economy and how it works. In this video, you're going to see how the government normally supports companies like this, but then after they've been supported, they normally just give us the big middle finger in our faces and are not willing to say thank you. It's a good lesson to also learn about the way companies work, how layoffs happen, why they normally happen, and then you'll also finally understand why I don't really like these layoffs from such profitable companies. First and foremost, from what I can see, most of the people only got two months of severance. Is there anybody out there that thinks that two months of severance is enough, considering the company is making $13.6 billion in profit from January to today? I don't think so. One thing that you must really know is how this company leaders get paid. Now, back in the day, Jack Welch, who was the CEO of General Electric, was not known for taking a lot in salary. His official salary was actually only $1, but the rest of his pay was in the form of stock options or shares. So Jack Welch was like, you know what? Just pay me $1, but then give me a lot of stock options, which are directly related to the company's performance in the stock market. This was considered a strategy to unite his interests with the interests of the shareholders of the company. This looked very good at the time because it seemed that it, after Jack Welch, so many other U.S. companies started paying their leaders in this form, mostly by stock options. Now, of course, this method was considered groundbreaking at the time because it ensured that the company employees who had stock options were only paid if the company did well because most of their salary was tied to the price of the company at the stock market. But the bigger question is, how do you keep the price of the stock high? You need to get investors interested in your stock if you want it to stay high. The only way to get investors interested is to show them that the company is growing and is making profit currently and that it's going to keep making even more profit in the future. This means that you need to be showing a profit on your balance sheet every three months. Since registered companies have to send out a financial report. So the investors normally look at the financial report and they're like, hey, how did you do this semester? And if things are going well, they will buy more stock. If the future looks very dim, then the investors are going to pull their money out of the company and the stock will go down. If the stock is showing very huge promise, investors are even willing to bid up the price so they can get a larger stake in the company so that when the stock goes up in price, everybody is going to get rich. So it's very important for the CEOs and the leaders of the company to keep showing a profit on paper. To prove their growth, businesses have to constantly demonstrate progress. And unfortunately, layoffs are sometimes the only option when the external business environment is very rough. The leaders are just normal people. And just like everybody else, they have to safeguard their salary. But their salary, unfortunately, depends on this stock price. 
So suppose the director is supposed to be paid 500,000 for the year and the stock drops 50%, that means that their salary is just going to drop to 250,000. And of course, nobody wants this to happen. So they're going to do anything to keep their piece of the pie. And this is one other reason why big businesses don't like unionized workers. The reason is that when workers form unions, they get a lot of leverage. And with that leverage, they can actually fight for their real rights. And the corporations can't just lay them off because if you're in a union, it's going to cost a lot for the corporation to lay you off and it's not just going to turn a profit. So that's why Tesla, for example, has always been against unions because in situations like this, they wouldn't just be able to lay off people and show a profit in the next quarter. Now, the stories about unions are always very complicated because some companies just don't have money to pay so many employees or pay a lot of employees. So it can negatively affect the employees in the long run. But for some other companies that are making huge profits like Tesla use this loophole to make sure that they hire people who are not in unions so that they can always do whatever they want to them. But that is not the bigger part of the story. The biggest point or the biggest part of the story is that most of Tesla's revenue is generated in the United States. Teslas are of course very remarkable cars. I personally don't have a Tesla, but for everybody that I know that owns one, they can't stop singing praises about this car. That means that that car is very good and Tesla is making a very good product because people don't praise trash. But that being said, this great product is not the only sole factor that is contributing to the company's success. The expansion of the electric vehicle market, of course, has been greatly aided by the numerous tax subsidies and tax breaks that are offered by the government. Right now, if you purchase an electric car, you could get up to $7,500 or $8,000 in tax rebates for the cheapest Tesla, which is 40,000 US dollars will be reduced to 32,000 US dollars. And then Tesla can then sell more cars and Tesla is going to make a much bigger profit. To encourage the widespread of EVs, the government has also made substantial investments in charging stations. People had refused to buy EVs because they're already scared that man, my battery might just run out when I'm on a long trip and I'll be damned. But now the government has stepped in to help. But that's not the only thing. The government also highly taxes cars from China that come into the USA. This is done so that the Americans will have no option but to buy these Teslas or any other electric cars that are made in the USA. A good example right now is that BYD, which is an, a Chinese manufacturer, has a cheap car that is 10,000 US dollars, while the cheapest electric Tesla is 40,000 US dollars. This is unfair to the consumer because we are being forced to buy a $40,000 car, yet we could have bought the BYD, which is 10,000. And that is a difference of 30,000 US dollars. That is a lot of cash, which many people can use to make a down payment and actually own their own home. Or they can use it to go for many vacations in the year. But we are being made to buy this very pricey car, which instead, makes a certain company profitable. However, when thinking about all of these subsidies and tax breaks, you have to ask yourself, where is the government getting all of this money that it is giving in tax breaks and subsidies to these electric companies like Tesla that enables them to keep making record profits every year? And I'll say that it's straight from the taxpayer's money. The taxes that we pay help these businesses make more profit. And this is why we can start to see why it's a bit unfair that they just keep laying off people like this. So the way that things are is that the government considered many of its bigger businesses like its babies, and it will do anything to safeguard these enterprises so that they can keep generating profit and keep the jobs and keep everything going. The USA government safeguards them from external competition and also helps and gives them a safe environment so that the baby can grow in a very safe environment and then make profit. However, when these companies fail, then the government has to use public funds to support these corporations. So public funds or public money is used to help the company to grow by offering them a safe environment. But also if they fail, then we also have to pay the company so that they can keep surviving. 
And there's so many historical examples, such as the bailout that happened for General Motors in 2008. At that time, George W. Bush was the president, and he announced a 17.4 billion handout for General Motors and Chrysler. These companies were saved when they were going to fail. Yes, of course, these bailouts are very important, and without them, the society would have fallen and the economy would have collapsed. But the main issue that I'm trying to show is that these companies, they want very little control from the government. After the government has helped them grow and survive using the taxpayers' money, they tell the government, hey, can you please leave us alone? Can you allow us to do whatever we want? We want to treat people however we want to treat them so that we can get this stock share price up and so that we can become rich and everybody can become rich. And after we become rich, we'll use trickle-down economics to spread the money to the rest of the people. But that's after we become rich, then we'll give the money to the other people. And this idea is normally called neoliberalism. It's when the businesses keep asking for their freedom from the government. And these companies also spend a lot of money to fight for their rights. It's called lobbying so that they can get better policies, which will help them make even more profits. Unfortunately, consumers, we always end up paying the price in the end. Because if the businesses fail, then we have to bail them up using the taxpayers' money. For example, banks messed up in the 2008 financial crisis because they were not controlled enough. And after the banks failed, they came back and they're like, hey, government, can you please help us? with billions of dollars that we can save the community. And of course, we had to give them the money because if you don't give them the money or if you don't bail them out, the economy is going to collapse. And unfortunately, it's the normal people in society who have to suffer from all the effects from the financial crisis. Those people that actually caused it, who are working in the banks, the CEOs, kept getting huge bonuses. Even in 2008, they kept getting million dollar bonuses and none of them went to jail. The banks were not punished for what they did, but instead they just got bailouts so that they could save the economy and save the community. The last point for this video is that I want you to know that nobody fully understands the financial system. The general public seems to believe that there is a group of intelligent people out there that are contemplating the fate of humanity and are trying to save the economy. Unfortunately, I must let you know that this is not the case. Of course, there are very bright individuals who have studied economics and have a far better understanding of the financial system than the average person. But the truth remains that they do not fully understand the complete system. And a very simple proof of this is that if they fully did, then we wouldn't be having the issues that we have today. What normally happens is that we try things that have worked in the past and for problems we've never faced, we try new solutions. And of course, mistakes do happen most of the time. Now, the further problem with this perspective of the intelligent people is that they normally think to themselves that, you know what, I know more than everybody else, so I should make all of the rules. After all, I spent eight years in school studying economics. And although we normally blame them and it's easy to blame them for thinking like this, I think it's very hard not to think like this because that's like a 30 year old or a 40 year old talking to a six year old. Of course, the 30 year old is going to be thinking to themselves, man, I've been in this field longer than you have. So it is my responsibility to take care of you. But unfortunately, when it comes to complex topics like the economy, extensive study alone isn't enough to guarantee mastery. Also, because they have a lot of power. They're often not controlled enough. And this is what happened in the financial crisis of 2008. They were given too much freedom. And since they're very normal people, they became very greedy and only cared about themselves. They stopped caring about the society and then messed it up for everyone. And of course, we like to blame them. But when somebody is not being checked on, normally most people are just going to do their own thing and try to do what is best for them most of the time. Now, this is the first video I've made straight from my head, and I didn't write any script for it. So I hope my ideas were congruent. So if you enjoyed this video, I implore you to check out the other videos on my channel that talk about the society. Thank you.